Hello, 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 hello. I am so glad you're all here. Uh, this is a kind of a random time for me to go live, but it was what worked best for my guest and I today. So today I have the pleasure to once again go live with my friend Gina. Now, you've heard me say it a million times, nobody does lives better than Gina, and she really kind of paved the way for a lot of us doing this, so I love to go live with her. Um, we have uh, our tag team type video for you today. We did one last month, and this month we're doing stencils, and we'll do them every month. And uh, every, other, every other month we're on my channel, and the other months we're on her channel. So we'll swap back and forth. Just something fun because we both love techniques and love to share and love an excuse to get together. So let's bring Gina in, Mike. Do you, I don't know how to do it. All right, bring her in myself. Oh, I pushed your button. Hey! <laughs> Look at that. There she is. Uh, hey, how are you? I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm hoping everybody can hear us okay. So let us know if we need to bump one of us up or quiet one of us down. We're um, yep. Gina, I'm excited to be with you again. I am always excited to be with you. And it's an opportunity to see you. I've missed you. It feels like I forever. Know. It's too it long. has been way too long. It I know. has been way too long. This has been a, a busy year. So hopefully 2024 is easier, right? Right. Absolutely. This is so much fun. Thank you for having me on your channel. Yes. I think uh, yes. we had so much fun on our last two lives together doing techniques that I'm yes. glad we're starting to do this on a regular basis. Yes. So tonight we're doing stencils and we, we will be taking turns sharing techniques that we like. So this isn't really about the final card, but just um, creative ways to stretch your stencils and use them, make the most of them, right? Absolutely. And it's great because you can save this video and you can find all of these techniques in one place because both Jennifer and I have done these techniques before, but we've done, you know, a whole focus video on one of them. This is a way to yep. just have them all like in a little library that you can just put on your YouTube shelf and, yep. you know, refer to over and over again. So we're calling them tag team techniques, is, I think is yep. what we call this series, right? Yes. So we'll be doing this w until we run out of ideas. Yep. Hope it's a long time from now, right? <laughs> well, by the time we run out of ideas, we won't remember. <laughs> oh, this is true. <laughs> and we this can start true. over and it'll just feel fresh again. <laughs> I actually, when I was talking at the beginning of this, I couldn't even remember what techniques we did last time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget what that was. Oh, it was embossing folders. Embossing folders, yeah. Right. Embossing and then before folders. that, we did foil techniques. Yeah. But, and, but to, that we're going to have to do more of that. Yeah, because the foil, we we kind of went back and forth with ideas, but that wasn't our intention going into it. Right. But we like right. doing that, so we decided to kind of make it a thing. So yes. Um, before we get started, I do want to ask you, if you've been here waiting for a while, refresh your browser, because I added information in the description about some of the things that we're using today, but Gina also has something special because she's the greatest person. She's the goat. She's the true goat. The, you know. the mule goat, right? The mule. <laughs> um, she's <laughs> offering something wonderful for everybody watching. Gina, do you want to share what that is? Sure. Yeah, we are offering all of Jennifer's viewers a special coupon code today because we're focusing on stencils. We're going to be doing a lot of ink blending. We are doing 15% off all of our stencils, all of our blending brushes, and our sponge daubers. So 15% off using the code tag team 15 and i'm sure jennifer has that in her description yep. if you refresh you'll probably see that yep. and um you know as you see these techniques maybe there's a stencil you wanted to pick up that you missed out on but i did want to give you a sneak peek of something that is also really fun because i know a lot of you already placed an order this month on our website to, you know, for our new release. And you probably qualified for this stamp set. So let me show you this stamp set. Tom, you wanna do the overhead here so I can show them this. This is our wonderfully made stamp set. And this is yours free with a $75 purchase. But if you've already placed an order this month, 
and you already got this one, there is a little description box, a little place to put notes at checkout. And you can let our folks know that you've already placed an order this month and you would like the alternative incentive set. And I'm going to give just Jennifer's viewers a peek. We didn't even do this on our live. We always just let them you know, guess what it's going to be. But this is the alternative set. It's called Find Peace. And it's a great set for making masculine cards and for nature lovers and things like that. So if you already have this one, just put, you know, send me the alternative. I've already placed an order this month and this one will come instead with any order of $75 or more. Now that's $75 or more. Um, that has to be your net total. So if it's $75 and then you put the coupon code in and it goes below that, you do have to have 75 of actual spend in your cart and then you'll, you'll get this little set. Well, either one, if you like this one better and you haven't gotten it yet, just don't say anything and this will automatically ship. But if you already got this one, you can get this one for free. Okay. And just put a note at checkout if you need the alternative one. Right. Right. Yep. If you want the alternative. Yep. Just, awesome. just tell them I already placed an order and I'd like the alternative set. And that's what you'll get. Well, thank you to your customer service team for handling that. I yeah. Appreciate it. So exciting. So all, sure. all of that is in the description below. So you don't have to worry about it. It includes stencils, inking tools, so brushes and daubers. Correct. Uh, it does yes. not include, somebody asked, does it include inks? Nope. Not inks today. No. It's just, um, it's just the brushes, the daubers, and the stencils. And will you be using your daubers today? Uh, I might, yeah, I definitely, okay. I will. But here's the other thing I wanted to let people know. You don't, you can get the free stamp set with anything in your cart. It doesn't yes. have to be the sale stuff. It's right. just that we're offering that additional sale on the items that we're gonna be using today, the stencils and right. brushes and stuff. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the discount is for just the stencil stuff. But the free gift is for anything that adds up to 75 at the end. Right. Correct. Great. That's it. Thank and you, then, Gina. Jennifer, I wanted to tell them too, and I've, I've been saying this a lot on my channel. If you are watching and we look blurry, we're not blurry. Um, there is a little gear under the screen that you can click on and make sure that you are watching in 1080 HD because yep. sometimes YouTube defaults to a much lower... Yep. Uh, quality and you might think that we look blurry, but that's what you have to do. All yep. right. Yep. I was just saying say mine always <laughs> mine always defaults lower too. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why so, either. Mine too. And so people, yep. If we look fuzzy, and you know, but actually fuzzy might be good because you won't. See I know. Our <laughs> I know. If we look fuzzy, try to only do it for the overhead camera. <laughs> yes. There you go. There you go. Okay, so um, the sale is valid. It's in the description below. It's through Friday night. So yep. all of the information is in the description. If you don't see it in the description below, refresh your browser because I just added it. All right. Perfect. Um, do, who, what, do you want to go first? No, you go first. I went first last time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. So we're doing stencil techniques. Let me see if I can switch here. Gina, can, can, do you want... I, is that okay to keep you up there, Gina, in the corner? Sure. I would love okay. to ooh and ah. Okay. Yeah, well. Um, okay. So uh, the first technique I wanted to do is one of my favorites with stencils, but you could also do this with stamps. In fact, I've seen this done a lot with stamps, and I thought I would do it like a variation of it with stencils. And this is trapped embossed resist. Now it sounds fancy, but basically we're going to do embossing over a colorful background and it'll trap the color beneath and we can add darker colors on top. So just bear with me and I will uh, do the technique but also share other ways to do it. Now to save time in this because my lives end up going way too <laughs> too long, um, I went ahead and stamped this. This is the Gina K Close Knit background stamp that came out in this last release and I stamped it with light spruce ink on uh, sea glass cardstock. So the only reason I did ahead of time was to save time. And also you want this ink to be completely dry when you do this technique. If you stamp it and need to use it right away, just heat set it so that ink is completely dry. Now, other things you could do here is you could do ink blending, you could do stenciling, but something with a small pattern is best for this. And that's why I really like this close knit. But she has a lot of great background stamps with small print that would be perfect for this. All right. And I decided to use, along with that newer stamp, an older 
um, an older stencil. Uh, is this foliage, I think, Gina? Do yes, you know? that's the one, okay. foliage. Yep. So this is an oldie but goodie. I use this one quite often. And I'm laying it on top of my uh, stamped background. And I'm gonna put a piece of tape there to create a little hinge. All right, so I'm gonna flip this up. And on this, I want to use an anti-static powder tool. There are a lot of great anti-static powder tools out there. This is the one that I just grabbed. Um, and I'm gonna apply that over the background just because we're gonna do embossing and I think it's good to always start with that. Now I'll flip the stencil back down. I am applying uh, a watermark ink over it. So you can use any clear embossing ink. Uh, you can use Versamark ink. Gina has a clear embossing ink, but I discovered I don't own it. So <laughs> I need what? to get it. <laughs> I know, I don't have it. And I am applying the Versamark ink over it. Any clear embossing ink, again, would work here. And I am using a Tim Holtz ink blending tool because I only have one sponge dauber of Gina's, the big one, and I've already used it on white ink, so I couldn't use it on the Versamark. But I like to use a sponge applicator when doing this because uh, Versamark ink or clear embossing inks are sticky and it's hard to kind of use with a brush. I also, because this is a very detailed stencil, I'm afraid if I go in a swirling motion with the sticky ink that I might bend some of those areas and I don't want to. Now, if you have the big sponge dauber from Gina, um, I would recommend using that for this because it's bigger. She'll show it to you later and it's on sale right now. Um, and that would allow you to press this Versamark ink into the openings even better and faster. So I'm just pressing as much ink as I can here. Now a variation of this technique would be instead of using a stencil here, you just stamp with Versamark ink, okay? So you'll barely be able to see it here. You can kind of see that little bit of watermark. And I'm going to add clear embossing powder to this. It doesn't matter if it's fine or regular clear embossing powder, but basically we're putting embossing powder over that ink we just applied. And this will trap that pattern underneath it. Because remember when you do embossing powder, the inks you put on top will resist. All right, so I'm gonna put that on. I'm making a mess because you know, that's what happens when everybody watches. Isn't that true, Gina? Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat set this. Sorry, my, my it'll get allowed for a minute, but I'm gonna just heat set this. So again, I did stamping um, un underneath my that stenciling we just did, but you could do like a rainbow ink blended background. You could stamp another pattern. Totally up to you. This is a, this is one of the coolest techniques. You know, I you just inspired me, Jennifer, because I was going to do this one technique and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do it completely, but I think I might do a different technique based on this inspiration right here. I'm kind of excited. Where'd she go? <laughs> Did she leave? <laughs> Oh, maybe I unplugged my headphones. No, I didn't. No, Mike, uh, Mike muted me yeah, because I, muted. Oh. Oh, I muted myself. <laughs> oh, and okay. I didn't even mean to. Okay, so, sorry about that. So see how it's clear embossed on there? Now, I just, because I want to really make sure I got good coverage with that embossing, I'm going to repeat that quickly. It'll be faster this time because I, um, my heat gun is warmed up and I really don't need to get great coverage. What I should have done but didn't do is put little marks so that my stencil would line up, I could line up my stencil easier the second time. I'm just lining it back up with the embossing we just did, but it's pretty easy to look through and see. And I'm putting more ink on top of the embossing we've already done. So this is gonna give us a second layer of embossing powder. You don't have to do this, but I do find if you're doing resist, Two layers of embossing powder are often good because then you can you don't get as much of the ink seeping through. All right, so let me put another layer on here and heat set this. All right, so again, I did one layer of embossing powder. 
and heat set it. Now I'm doing another. I'm going to mute myself while I, and you you can chat. Okay. How about that? I'll chat. Okay. That sounds good. So the technique that Jennifer's doing right now, I've never tried this technique and I absolutely want to try it. It looks so cool and I can kind of see where she's going with this. Um, and if anybody has any questions about this, let us know. The, the jumbo dauber should not be sold out. We, um, we, only have, um, we only have one kind of dauber on our website. And I did check before the live and we had hundreds and hundreds of them available. So they should be in there. If you go to stencils, that's the category you wanna to go to, stencils. You can also look under coloring tools and you should be able to find um, the daubers, but make sure you're spelling them right too. If you're going onto the website, some people try to spell them D-A-B-B-E-R, like a dabber. It's actually dauber, D-A-U-B-E-R. So check it out. I know that we have them because I checked and we've got, we've got a lot of them. <laughs> I just looked and they're there. If you follow the link in the description, it'll get you to the right place and show you that it's there. Oh yeah, good. Okay. So now we have that clear, it's the bigger ones, yeah, which is what I recommend. So now yep. see how we have that shiny pattern on there. What we're gonna do now, you do not have to, oh, I did use anti-static for the second. I should have, if I didn't, I should have. <laughs> we'll see. I, I think you're uh, fine though. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. Okay, so now I have the pattern trapped underneath the embossing powder in that pattern of the stencil. Now I'll apply heavy amount of ink over this. Now it's up to you. You could go lighter. You could go with a blending tool, but I really like the contrast because what happens is the darker ink covers the pattern pretty much out here, but won't cover it under where you embossed. So watch, when you wipe this clean, see how that's protected under there. Oh, it's gorgeous. So now that was tropical teal that I did on half. This is dark spruce that I'll do on the other half. And I'm just going very firmly direct to paper. But again, if you want to use an inking tool, you could do that. You could have a softer look, but I really like that high contrast. So I'll apply that ink on there and then take my dry cloth and look at that. You can see that, and you can go darker if you want. Black is really cool over this. But mm. look at how, where you did the embossing with the stencil, you trapped that pattern underneath it. So now it looks like your leaves have a pattern to them. So this was um, the sweater, the, the cozy knit, I think that's called. It, it's the close, close knit. knit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did that in light spruce on sea glass cardstock. Then I did clear embossing and then I put tropical teal and dark spruce on top. And there we have our first technique. Now I did this a couple times off screen. And let me show you these two. Now, this is just like I showed you, and I just made it into a simple mm -hmm. card. The only reason I did this is because I was dying to use <laughs> this die set from you, the Ornate Love. I love this, and so I did it in silver and white, and then I used your lattice embossing folder on the background. Very simple design once you have that done. Now, this one, I, I put uh, not as dark of an ink on the background so you could see the pattern a little bit, but I started with a darker blue cardstock. This was turquoise C that I started with, and I didn't like it because you couldn't see the pattern as much in there. Uh, so I really like to go light on the background, dark on, on top. And the Jumbo Dauber is on in stock. Let me, let me show you. Yeah, this is what it looks like if you want to... I can show them what it looks like. Oh, you know what it is, Gina? I, what it, it, there, one's coming up that's not yours. It's like the old version. Oh, okay. Let me. Uh, that's what they're seeing. Mike just pulled it up. Okay. Do you have a link to the right one? Yeah. I just okay. put it in the comments. The, okay. The correct, the correct one's in the comments. The one that's in stock. All right. Okay. So that's our Perfect. first one. This is trapped embossed resist. So you could. Instead of doing over a stencil, you could have stamped like a bold image on top and done the same technique. But I like mixing the stamps and the um, stencils together. So there but we have I it. Think that, that, that's an incredible combination too. I love the way the sweater looks in there. It, it looks so elegant. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. Really Again, beautiful. Another one you know that would be great for this is your script your el that the kind of scripty looking the elegant script yeah yep. that would be beautiful. and also the music would be good too 
Yeah. So anyway, and you know, our, our background stamps sold out because we just redid them all in clear. We don't have any yeah. left, but they are coming back in and Jennifer and I are going to do another video with background stamp techniques. We've been talking I, about that. I so, think that, well, yesterday the close knit one was still in stock. So yeah, I don't it know is. if it is or not. No, it is. It's still in stock. Okay. And I do want to, I do want to show everybody, this is what the dauber looks like. Tom, can you go to the overhead? This is what it looks like if you're looking for it. So it's got a, a kind of an off white top and it's big. I mean, it's probably, the head of this is probably about the same size as the, the one that you were using. Yep. Probably yep. similar. No, and, no, no, no. It's bigger. It's That's bigger. bigger. Okay. That's why I would, that's why I would recommend that. I would highly recommend getting one of those for verse mark ink or clear embossing ink and one for white, because mm -hmm. when you use those inks over a stencil, it's best to not swirl because it's so sticky. That, that dauber would be great. I have one assigned for white. I just haven't gotten one assigned for clear yet. So. Clear. Yeah. And it does make a difference. And all you have to do is yes. just press the color into the stencil yes. as opposed to, you know, and the other thing that I found is when you use blending brushes with Versamark or pigment ink, they dry really crusty, but oh, my yeah. daubers, there's never a problem. Yeah. I can just reuse right. them over and over again. So yeah, yep. that's a good I agree. And you can still them. blend with them fine. Oh, yeah. But for that particular ink over stencil, I, I recommend the daubers. So yeah, there we go. For sure. That's a great technique. Tag your it. It's your okay. turn now. Okay. Well, you inspired me. So I'm going to do something a little bit different than what you did. Now I have a background stamp here. This is one of our old red rubber backgrounds because I don't know where I put my new ones, but we have this one coming in in clear and you would be able to get it if you don't already have it. This is our petite flourish background. And I'm going to show you something really cool that you can do with um, embossing ink and powder, but a little bit different than what Jennifer did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and I'm just going to ink, uh, to wipe this all over the surface to get rid of static and any oil and stuff like that. I probably don't need a piece of cardstock this big, but it's here. So now I'm going to keep this on its back here and I am going to take some of the embossing and watermark ink. Now, if you don't have embossing and watermark ink like this, of course, use the Versamark. It's totally fine. It works great. Um, and I'm just going to ink this all up. So it's going to take me a minute here because it's a big stamp and I want to make sure that I get it right the first time because I am not using a misty for this. So I want to make sure I get it really inky. You know what? Let me put my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay. I think this is going to do it. All right. I'm just looking at the side view and I can see that it's all inked up. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is just place this piece of cardstock on top like this. And then I'm gonna get another piece of cardstock. I'll just use this little scrap here. And I'm gonna rub my hands all over it to make contact everywhere where the stamp meets the paper. I like doing background stamps this way because I find that I get better contact than when I use yep. my Misty. It's just a personal preference. Some people prefer the Misty. Some people prefer to stand on them. It's totally whatever you want to do. All right. So now I should have good inking on here and I'm going to use some white embossing powder for this. And I am going to I'm not going to need this whole thing, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm going to put some white embossing powder on here. And so this is a little bit different than trapping the color like Jennifer did. You called that trapped embossing? Yeah, trapped embossed resist. I don't know. I need okay. a simpler name. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the name. And I, I can't even remember what I called this in my video, but the technique is the same. Okay, so now... Let me, it's kind of hard to see everything here because it's white. You might be able to see that a little bit. Now I'm gonna get yep. a clothespin here. I'm not too worried. This side doesn't look that great. So I will just put the clothespin over here. And then I too have my Wagner heat tool. I'm gonna heat this yep. up. And then I am going to quickly melt this powder. Now what's nice about this is I'm using white cardstock and white embossing powder. So it's going to give it almost like an embossed look. 
It's tone on tone. If you want to do this with colored cardstock, I recommend using clear powder because if you use clear powder, you are going to trap the color of the cardstock under the embossing powder. But for this, I'm using white on white. And also my, my stamp was a little dirty and it did transfer a little ink because I hadn't cleaned it well the last time I used it. So by using white powder, I just covered all that up. So you're not going to see it. Background stamps are pretty easy to clean. I usually take them to the sink, especially after using Versamark or something like that, yeah. embossing ink. And I just take a toothbrush with a little Dawn detergent or whatever dish detergent I have, and I just scrub them with the toothbrush. I promise I don't use Tom's toothbrush. <laughs> so Kathy just asked, <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom. I, I, I don't think she would. <laughs> no. uh, hi, Tom. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, Kathy asked, she said the petite, she got the petite flourish and clear. It yes. is the same as the cling that she's using. It exactly. used to be in cling. She's just now doing them in clear. So yes. and, there are advantages of clear background stamps. And we're going to do that in our next tag team. Yes. And um, they work exactly the same. Clear stamps yep. have gotten so good that, you know, you don't even notice anymore that there's a difference. Okay, so I'm gonna use two colors here. I'm gonna use some turquoise sea ink. I know I have it in here somewhere. And then let me grab powder blue. I think that would be a nice combination. Powder blue would work or also medium lilac. Maybe I'll use medium lilac. Okay, let me grab my lilac brush. Here we go. Now, hey, Gina, I just real, real quick, I just realized before I called it tropical teal, it's tranquil teal. Oh, that's so okay. If, sorry. I had the teal part right. I know it's a T word. I know you just want to go to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know me well. I do. Okay, so I'm going to, um, because I didn't do a great job of getting this to the edge, I am going to offset my stencil just a little bit here, which isn't going to matter because I'm going to cut this down to fit a card. But I'm going to just tape this down on the top and the bottom. I'm using a little masking magic, but you can use, you know, pixie tape or any kind of tape you have. And then I'm going to use the Stellar Snowflake stencil, and I'm gonna place that right on top here, okay? And I'm gonna tape that down as well. Now, of course, you can use a sticky mat or anything like that as well. Let me grab one of Brianne's ink stands. All right, yes. I'm gonna, gonna start with the uh, Tranquil, uh, not Tranquil Teal, I'm gonna start with Turquoise C. And I'm going to randomly do some turquoise C. So I'm going to start here in the center. I'm going to ink that up really well. Now, what you can see happening is that pattern is going to emerge. So this is kind of like an emerging background in your stencil. So it's really kind of unique. And what's nice about it is the pattern itself is actually going to be all over your card. So your card's going to have that little extra bit of texture, um, which is cool. But you're really going to see the pattern in the stenciled areas. So let's just... So this is just an, uh, this is a variation of embossed resist with a stencil. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so now we're going to put that purple in there and blend the purple colors together, the purple and the turquoise together. And then when we're done, I'm going to take a soft cloth or paper towel, and I'm going to just blend over that with the paper towel, and you're going to see all that white emerge. Okay. Oh, I love purple and turquoise together. So I, You know, you use that combo a lot, and I always forget. I'm stuck with your using your lilacs and orchids together. That's oh, they're my pretty together. Combo. Oh, that's pretty together. And I Constantly forget to do that. that. Yep. So now I'm going to add a little more turquoise in here just to blend it a little better. Look you can see that. it gets more like more of a purple blue, more of a wisteria so in the middle. Okay. So now when we pull this off, look at that. When we take a paper towel, and we rub over that. Now wow. you can see you've got that beautiful 
design in there. And I like the petite flourish design for this because petite flourish feels very frilly and there's a lot of movement in it, almost like a snowflake, like, like the yeah. wind, you know? So that is a second technique that you can do emboss resist with your stencils. That's gorgeous. Yeah. I like the, that flourishy look with the snowflake. That's gorgeous. And it is cool that you still see, like when you turn it to the side, you can still see the design on the cardstock yep. too. So it is a very elegant Christmassy, yep. wintry kind of design. And the All close right. knit would look cool. The close knit with white ink or with white embossing powder would look cool under that stencil also. Oh my God, it would look beautiful. It would look yeah. so pretty because very it would different just- Very different look too. Just wintry, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Gorgeous, okay. I love it. You're it, Jennifer. Oh, goodness, Tag you're it. <laughs> oh gosh, what am I doing next? What am I doing next? Let's see. Okay, <laughs> now honestly, I don't think I've done this next one before. Maybe, Ooh. maybe. Well, it's like, a, it's kind of a variation on one of my favorite techniques, but I'm making it more complicated because, you know, that's what I like to do. <laughs> Make things more complicated. I love it. I, I am using the one of your, my favorite of your stencils of all time, and that is the spectac Spectacular Sunflower. Ooh. Uh, this Ooh. glaring stencil set. Man, I tell you, I did a bunch of cards in a video <laughs> for that, using it, a ton of cards. Um, I have it linked below in my description because I knew I was going to be using it. But anyways, um, I'm going to do a variation of that today. So what I have here um, are that there are these four stencils that come in the set. One gives you the solid uh, flower and the leaf. One gives you the details of the flower. One gives you the center, like the center of the flower. Let me line these up and detail on the leaf. And then there's this one that give you little options to decorate the inside of the flower. I'm going to start with the first one here. This is the, um, the base. So what would be the bottom or the bottom inked layer if you were doing normal stenciling, but we're going to do a technique that I call stencil press ink press, Ooh. something like that. I don't know. I have a video where I did a lot more of this linked below, but with this, we're going to start with cardstock, which I don't have ready. How's that for prepared? It's okay, no problem. I have just plain white cardstock here. And I'm going to take a piece of tape and tape this on to my, um, onto my cardstock. I like creating hinges when I do, let me do it this way. Um, I like creating hinges when I do uh, techniques where I might want to repeat the process. So I have this just taped onto white cardstock. Now for this one, I'm going to flip this open so that I can ink up the back of my stencil. Okay, this is completely different than um, anything that uh, we, we've done so far. We're inking up the back of the stencil. Now I'm using my um, sea glass ink. You'll have to forgive me because my sea glass ink is in need of reinking, but my reinker has gone missing. Oh, so no. I have my tr all my other reinkers here, but for some reason sea glass is gone because I probably reink it the most. Okay, my favorite color of yours. All right, so what I'll do here is I'm going to apply, uh, let me do it this way. I'm first going to apply sea glass directly onto the back of the stencil. So I'm just pressing on here just to get as much ink as I can onto it. Then I'm, I have my ink stand here to hold my ink pad and I have my Tim Holtz brayer here and I'm going to pick up more ink and just kind of smooth that out. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I find using a brayer is great for this. You could also use a blending brush, but the brayer really gives nice smooth results. Uh, and I really like the Tim Holtz uh, brayer quite a bit. Okay, next I have my intricate die cut machine. I love this machine, but you definitely could use whatever die cut machine you have. You just need to set it up to use for making an impression with a die, whatever the instruction manual says, and that always includes a flexible mat. So I have my intricate set to do, uh, to do 2D emboss. And I am going to take that ink stencil, that's all ink there, and flip it down so it's touching the white. 
Then I have my platform, my flexible mat, and I'll put the stencil down onto it, and then my top plate. So I'm following the instructions that Gina has in her intricut machine for making an impression or embossing with the die, but instead I'm doing it with a stencil. And because my stencil was inked up, that ink will transfer onto the cardstock. See how it's pressed on there? Oh, that's so pretty. now the inked part is the reverse. It's not like you're stenciling over this and getting color in the petals. You're doing the inking around the edge. Now I used a super light ink for this, right? Sea glass is a very, very light ink. I'm gonna repeat the process. Because I have that hinge that I created with the tape, I can repeat the process and it'll line up again, no problem. So I inked it up with direct ink pad to the back of the stencil. Same color, still sea glass. And now I'm just gonna kind of smooth that ink out a little bit, kind of spread it out a bit. Get this out of the way. Get everything set up again here. Again, it's the platform, my flexible mat. I'll close this up so that the ink side of the stencil is touching the cardstock and lay that down onto the flexible mat. Gina, people keep asking, when will the machine be back in stock? So that machine <laughs> did finally ship. Um, Yay! But we have some issues right now with shipments coming from overseas for two reasons. Um, one reason is because they can't ship through the Red Sea anymore. And now oh, they have dear. to go yeah. down around the bottom of Africa, yeah. which is very dangerous and takes a lot longer. Oh, and they my. also can't go through, I don't know if it's the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal. One of them is dried up and, a, and the big cargo oh. ships can't fit. So things are taking a little bit longer. We are hoping for a springtime release. We're hoping that it'll be back in sometime in the spring. So she ordered them right away. It just takes a I long did. time, right? I did. I ordered I ordered them right away. I can't believe how long it's taking. It's a slow, it's literally a slow boat, right? Yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> so we it, we pressed that sea glass ink onto our cardstock using the um, using the embossing mat, that flexible mat. Now I'm gonna take now so you could do this with any single stencil, and that gives you the reverse, right? Well, now I'm gonna take the next layer and I'm gonna line it up with what we have already. So this is this would normally be a layering stencil and this would add more detail, right? Well, we're gonna do the same technique again. So this time, I think I'll use, um, let's try turquoise C. So I'm gonna go direct to paper first or direct to stencil, I should say. So I'm inking up the back of the stencil. And you can do this with single stencils, any kind of stencil works. Um, I do like it most with stencils that have like a solid look to it, like a not too much detail. I'm gonna kind of smooth that out. Then we'll close the stencil onto it and do the same thing again. And this will give us more ink, but only kind of in a different way. So you'll get a two-tone look. So I'll put that on there, run it through. This is very saw, cool, Jennifer. I saw somebody did a super chat. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I, I missed it along the way. Okay, Billy, thank you, Billy. And so now look at, we put more ink down and you're seeing that layering look show up. I'm gonna do it one more time and then we will be done. There are, now there are additional layers that you can do, but with those, I just did regular stenciling. So I'm gonna put ink on the back of the stencil, use a brayer to kind of smooth it out, and then close yeah, that together. That. Got my embossing mat here, which presses it together. Put the cutting plate on top. And I like the intercut because it's got the dial on the side, so I don't have to figure out what plates. All right, so now we have an opposite look. So oh, it's look opposite from before. Oh, that's so cool. What was the second color? That the second color so was cool. turquoise C. So this is what I this is the one I did as practice. After you oh, let the inks dry, because Gina's inks have that like a smoothing agent that kind of just soften and blend into each other. 
and that's the look we get. So it's opposite of if you used ink over the open areas of the stencil. If I did ink over the open areas of the stencil in the traditional way, you'd have a colored flower and the background would be white. So it's just another way to use your stencils creatively. That's gorgeous. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's so sunny looking. So that's a great spring card. That is fantastic. Yeah. I'm. That's why I have the rainbows on today. I'm looking for end to this gloominess out here. Absolutely. And the, um, the You're an Awesome Friend, this is one of my favorite sets from Gina, You Give Me Butterflies, because these messages have the coordinating die available, and I love how this cuts that out. I think it's great to add on to anything. Now on this card, I did finish it off um, by using this center stencil, and I did some darker turquoise C there, a heavy amount of turquoise C there to make that dark. Then I used this portion right here on top of it with white pigment ink just to do soft white dots. That is adorable. That is such a happy card. I love it. And I love that technique. I love how the background is all filled in because that's not yep. what you would expect. And that really, yep. and it's not like cardstock background. It's kind of soft and it's got that yep. airbrushed look. I really love that. The other nice thing is, say you have a single stencil, like the foliage one I used earlier, you can do this technique and like press blue ink into the background, then lay the stencil on top and do like yellow ink in the floor, in the uh, over the stencil. And that way you get a two tone that would be hard to achieve other ways. So lots of Fabulous. things you can do with that technique. Fabulous, right. that's great. That's a perfect stencil tag. for it too, I love it. Ta-da, oh tag, I'm it, okay. Tag so it. <laughs> So because Jennifer is making card, well, made sample cards for everything that she is doing, and I never know what I'm gonna do because I always fly by the seat of my pants. While she's doing her technique, I'm just throwing my stencil, uh, my stencil technique into a card. So I'll show you one that I whipped up real quick while I was watching Look at Jennifer. That. So there you is. You just did that. Yeah, and I just Gosh. added a few little sequins to it and added a Merry Christmas strip sentiment that happened to be laying in my scrap basket here. I was lucky. But um, <laughs> that's how that would look as a finished card. All right, so my turn again. So the next thing I wanna show you is reverse stenciling. And reverse stenciling is so much fun to do. So I'm going to get a piece of cardstock here. Let's see, let me find one. Here we go, here's a piece. So this is just a quarter sheet of cardstock. And I'm gonna tape this down and then ink colors. I gotta pick some ink colors. One thing that I really love about the technique I'm gonna show you is how vibrant this looks. It looks like a hot mess at first, but let me grab a couple ink pads. Okay, give me a second. I gotta pull is, them out wait, here. Wait, isn't, isn't that true of us too? We look like a hot mess at first? Yeah, but, but we I kind keep of have like our a... act together? I don't know. <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> I keep looking like a hot mess. <laughs> and don't be, and now here's the thing. I may have cards, look at how inky I am. I may have cards completed, but that's because I have to know what I'm doing ahead of time. I can't, I'm not as good as Gina. I got it. I have to think all this stuff through. She can just, she's just a pro at live, so... Well, I've done so I've done these techniques before. So I'm not like, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I just think it's good to have them all in one place for everybody. So I'm totally. just going to do a color combination that I've done before with this technique because I think it's the awesome. perfect color combination for this stencil that I'm going to use. So the stencil that I am going to use here for this technique is the Where did I put it? I know I pulled out some stencils because you and I were texting back and forth this morning, yeah. just kind of making sure that, you know, we did a, a nice variety of stencils. And yep. I had it here. Here it is. So this is our seashell stencil. And I love this one. I, let me back up just a little bit. I'm pretty close here. And for those of you that are watching on a 87 inch screen, it's just too much. Okay, um, so this seashell stencil is a great one to do. Now, let me show you a couple others that would work. The daisy chain would work beautifully for this. What you're looking for nice. is you're looking for a stencil where the design itself is solid and the openings around the design are open. Okay, so like in this case, these are very solid images here. You're not like, stenciling and the inside of this 
is going to be colored if you stencil this. The inside would be white. It's kind of all around. This is another great one for that. Also, this one, the Mega Flower, is a great one for this technique. Any of these would work, but I'm going to use the seashell one because I haven't for a while and I love the beach, so we're just going with it. Now I'm going to use some neon ink for this because I think it makes it even brighter um, and it's just so much fun. Now these are our Electro Pop neon inks. If you've never tried them before, they're super fun to use. I'm going to start with the blaring blue and I'm just going to do a direct to paper technique. So I'm going to take this blaring blue and I'm just going to rub all over here just to make it nice and solid. You can use a blending brush if you want, but it's not really necessary. Okay, so I've got some blaring blue there. Then I'm going to take the Screamin' Green. You can also use the Loud Lime, but Screamin' Green is definitely a lot different from the Hello Yellow. So I like the contrast in this. So now like we're going to do some... <laughs> Rena named them. <laughs> yeah, tell them whose inks these are. These are these Somebody are asked. Rena K's inks, and um, that's my daughter, and she really wanted bright neon inks. So I said, "All right, well, this is your project then." And she came up with eight colors and eight names that are really funny. The only one I vetoed was Raging Red. She has Raging Red, but she initially called it Rash Red. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna do a rash <laughs> and now i'm gonna use the hello yellow so you can see this is like highlighter yellow can you see how vibrant that is it's just oh, like that's so the fun colors are so pretty and they go on really nicely all right so i'm gonna get a little more green into that yellow and i'm not afraid to mix my colors so I'm not too worried about if a little bit transfers here, just kind of rub it off and it'll work just fine. Okay, and again, if you prefer to use daubers or blending brushes with these, you certainly can. Now, I'm just gonna give that a second to dry. In fact, I might hit it just with the heat tool here since it's out. These inks have a, I don't know all the chemistry behind it, but they have like a phosphorescent kind of thing going where you can actually, smell that just a little bit in the ink and then that disappears but it's what makes them neon as opposed to um you know just a regular bright yellow like our wild dandelion or a bright green like lucky clover when you see like lucky clover here's lucky clover just as an example if you want to see how different and which vibrant is a fantastic is. green yeah it is but i mean see how like calm that is compared to how yeah. like absolute neon this is Yep. So definitely doesn't have the phosphorescent. Okay. Now we're going to lay this stencil on top. And this is where it's going to really start to look like a hot mess. I'm going to put some pixie tape on here. I, sh I really should get my, I have a, the Simon Says Stamps stencil mat and I should be using that because it would be a lot easier, but yeah. I'm already into it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get black ink. And we're going to create the reverse design. So, and the black is just going to make these colors pop so much more. Normally, if we had just stenciled this in color, you would have all of the open spots in color, and then you would have a lot of these designs in white. But because we're going to go over this entire thing with black, all of the designs are going to be in this vibrant neon color. So I'm going to ink up my blending brush real well with some black onyx dye ink. And then I'm going to take my time and just work this all over this stencil. Okay. And this is so where that's black ink, right? This is just black dye ink. And you definitely want to use a dye ink for this. Um, you want it to dry relatively quickly. Some of the pigment inks and the, you know, other permanent inks, they just take a really long time to dry and it can be yeah. that much messier. So I just use black onyx. It's a great dye ink and it does dry relatively quickly. This is a lot of black though. Okay, now, but it's the fun. other thing I'm going to do, it is fun. I'm going to just take a little bit of a paper towel, and I'm just going to put it down here so that when I kind of secure this, I'm not getting black ink all over myself. Callie's here. Hi, Callie. Callie said that you, this takes bravery to do what you're doing. 
<laughs> to go in with the black ink. This would be pretty with rainbow ink blended underneath it too. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Rainbow blends, any kind yeah. of bright colors. But when you when we peel the the stencil off, it it is pretty pretty dramatic. Okay. Yes, it is. So I am going to just clean this a little bit. Now, what you might notice is when you wash your stencil after using the black onyx ink, the ink will come off, but your stencil will be purple. Okay. Um, all you have to do is take a little bit of Gina K Designs stamp cleaner on the stencil and all that purple will go away and it'll come up, up like a brand new stencil. So, nice. okay. So here we go. We're going to peel this off, peel and reveal. Yes, the stencil will go white again if you clean it. That'll Absolutely. Look at that. That Look is amazing. At the glow. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, and, and the best it, part about that background, there's so much interest that you just add a sentiment in your set. That's it. That's it. Uh, in I fact, it. I just like, I just cut this out and I was going to, while you Perfect. do your next one, I was going to pop that on there. And this little greeting is from our kindness silhouettes. I've been thinking about you. I thought I'll just pop it on there. Although there's probably better greetings to use something big and bold, like a scripty white word or something might look great with a shadow behind it. But isn't that fun? And what, that is. what I love about this stencil too, it feels almost like an aquarium. You know how when you go into an aquarium and they have the yep. black light in there and everything just kind of glows it gives it that same kind of feel that so that's so the cool. reverse stencil technique and let me just show you what i mean here about cleaning because you know you've got jennifer's coupon code and you have an opportunity to um to maybe get a couple other things although i don't know if our stamp cleaner is in stock right now or not so many things sold out during black friday and it's been a bear trying to get them back in stock. I know there's a lot of manufacturer issues, it seems. Right there now. really is. So I'm just this, cleaning this. This would be fun for a, a bold, like a, maybe a stencil with like a pinwheel kind of pattern or something for a birthday card. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so you see what I'm saying with the purple, how the stencil is kind of stained purple? Yep. Okay. So... <clears throat> That's not going to hurt anything. If you don't want to clean it from there, you certainly don't have to. But if you, you know, that kind of bothers you, a little bit of our stamp cleaner on there. And all of that comes right off. Look at that. And then see? I would just take it to the sink, you know, and scrub it. But can you see? It's much whiter now. Much Beautiful. cleaner. Yeah. Just do it on both sides and then take it to your sink and do a good soap and water with it and it'll all be clean again, so. Never be afraid of ink. No, no, it's too much fun. <laughs> oh, my hands it are is, sticky it is. now. All right, <laughs> gosh. All right, Well, so. that was beautiful. I love the Thank different you. looks we've gotten so far. Yes. Completely different looks. Four completely different looks, fun things to try with your stencils. And Jennifer, tag your it. Tag I'm it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to dive in because this one takes a, oops, a little bit more effort. But I really like the Bodacious Bloom stencil set, not only because I like the designs, but I also think that name is so much fun. Uh, so <laughs> this stencil, it this actually comes th together. This is one stencil. I cut it down the middle. And this is another stencil and I cut it down the middle. I, You're so brave. I, well, I like that you make them, so it's only two stencils in the set because that saves on costs, but I can cut it and work with it as the four separate stencils. So I'm just using these three. I'm not using the lattice, but I really appreciate that that's included because it can be used in so many ways. Now I have a piece of white cardstock here and I'm gonna do mirror stenciling and this is, this is really easy to do with like a single stencil, but I wanted to show you it works well with um, layering stencils too. So I use my T-ruler just to put a pencil line right down the middle so that I can um, do a mirror stenciling on one side and the other. Uh, I saw a question about um, the code. It's on Gina's site and mm -hmm. all the information is in the description below. So you should be able to find it there. Now I'm using Masking Magic because that's the best masking paper there is. I love this stuff. 
And I'm gonna use it in a few different ways. You could use tape for this first one, but I like Masking Magic because you can reuse it easily. I'm lining up the stencil so that it kind of overlaps a little bit with that pencil line. Can you see that pencil line under there? So it yes. just kind of overlaps there. I'm gonna lay that down and then I'm taking a piece of Masking Magic that I have here. It can be a, a smaller piece, but I'm gonna reuse this. And I'm gonna put this on top of the stencil right up to that pencil line. So the pencil line is right along this edge. This will hold my stencil in place and it will also mask off the right hand side of my paper. So my stencil is just, so I, uh, on over the cardstock, masking papers right up against that pencil ledge. Now off screen, I took this stencil and just inked it quickly on masking magic, okay? And I cut out the flower itself. These masks will allow me to ink up the flower one color and the leaves another color. Now you could get clever with other ways of masking, but I find this is easy. I can keep these masks with my stencils and use them again in the future. So let's first take the negative mask. This I'll place on top of my flower here so that all that is exposed is that flower there in the center. So I'm hoping you can see that. So it's masked here so that just the flower is exposed. My um, foliage is covered or the stems covered. Got my ink stand here. I've got my blending brushes and now I have to find my ink. Everything runs away. Okay, so I have light spruce here. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go with light. No, no, we're doing the flower first. Sorry, and I told you before, my favorite ink combo is the orchids with the lilac. And I am not gonna spend a lot of time here doing any kind of fancy blending. We're just gonna put a little bit of that light orchid. This is the lighter. There's a light, light medium and dark orchid. I'm doing the light. And then I'll come in with the medium lilac, which is a little bit darker. And I'm gonna put that more towards the middle. Just overlap those so they'll just be a little touch of pink on the outside edge okay then I will take a dry cloth and just wipe that off I can take this mask off and save it for later next I'll take the positive part where it's just the flower itself again this is on masking magic which is very durable so I know I can use it many times in the future now it's time for that spruce. I'm gonna come in with light spruce here. I probably have some dark ink on my brush, so it might be a little bit darker at first, but that's okay. And when I use blending brushes, I like to go in both directions because that gets you into the nooks and crannies, so it's kind of like that wax on, wax off. So there is the first layer. So I can take that off and see how we have the first layer done. Now I'm gonna clean my stencil very quickly and when I do quick stencil cleaning, I just use a spritz of rubbing alcohol and clean it off. Normally I would wait to clean it, but we're gonna need this clean for the next part. All right, where's my next stencil? Mike, where did it go? Oh, here it is. It's under my masking magic. So now I'm gonna take the next stencil and line it up. It's very easy to line up because I can follow the center of the flower and the, the tips of the leaves. This will just give us some detail on everything. All right, so let me put that in place, put that mask back down here so that mask is still in the same place and it's holding my stencil in place. I'll go back to the negative part here. Whoop. Line this up. Line that up there. Now I'm gonna come in just with that medium lilac and go heavier handed here, right at the center. And then where did I put the other little mask, Mike? Here it is. Wipe that clean. Put that other little mask on top. And now we're gonna go with the darker spruce. If I can find it, here it is. And I'll put that over top. So I'm doing the layering stencil how it's meant to be. I, uh, Gina has her name engraved on the bottom so I know what the front of the stencil is. And here we have the first half. Now, I will go back later and add this third layer detail onto the flower and the center onto the flower, but I want to skip ahead to the mirror part, okay? So now 
we have our stencils. Let me clean those again. Well, actually, we can start with this first one. So this, this is how the stencil is meant to be. I'm going to stretch it to get a mirror image by flipping the stencil over. So stencils, you can use both sides. And so I'm lining it up on the other side here, and it's a mirror image now. I'll take that same masking paper and line it up on this side this time, right along the pencil line. The pencil line's right under there. And now I can do the same technique. So let's put, oh, wait, wait. But my masks are backwards now, right? So off screen, I created new masks with the stencil um, flipped over. So let's put this on and ink this side. So you could do this, I think this would be really pretty with the two colors that Gina did earlier. Uh, that was it turquoise sea and wild wisteria? Uh, it was medium lilac, turquoise sea and medium oh, okay. lilac, yeah. And I love what you're doing here. And you know what's great about that? You can just save those masks and use them yes. again and again. I, yeah, I will stick okay. them actually on the back of my stencil sleeve, or you can put them right on the inside. And that way you can be sure to have them next time you use this stuff. Um, the nice thing about masking magic over other masking paper or other things is that the color won't bleed through it as fast. So you can reuse them over and over and over. All right, so now we'll remove this. Now for the, the positive space to cover this up. Let's remove the back of this. Cover up the flower so that we can ink the stems. I'm gonna go with the light spruce. There'll probably be some dark spruce still on here. That's okay. We'll just blend that out. And you could change up so that this side is different colors, but I think it's pretty cool and really adds to the mirror look if it's the same on both sides, but just a mirror image. So the same color inks. All right, so now I can remove that and you can see how we're starting to get this in the other way. So think about it. If you have a stencil that has a certain pattern to it, try inking it, flipping it over, and then inking it again and do like an overlap look and it just gives you uh, a new pattern. But Love in that. this case, we're gonna have a reverse, a reverse flower. All right, so now let me line this one up real quick, and then I'm gonna move, let Gina take the stage. All right, so we'll line that up. Again, put the negative. Is this the right, I keep throwing things off to the side, Gina, and then I can't find them. Oh, I hear you. Oh, yeah, I, I tell you. <laughs> One of these days I'll learn. I actually got a little cart next to me so I can put things in the cart instead of throwing them on my desk and them st and I'm not doing it. I know, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> it's the way it goes. Okay, so now we just do the green. And you can see the ink doesn't bleed through the masking magic. That's the nice thing about the masking magic. And there, the masking magic is available in strips too, so you can like mask little borders. I like to use the strips as tape also when I'm masking. So I'll put this for die cuts too. I think I took. I think I no, I didn't. Okay. Yes, you're right. It die cuts nicely. Okay, so now I can remove this and look at we have a mirror. Now I had I actually because I was trying to do too much I put spruce on over there instead of the lilac so that's why it looks a little bit different but you can see my brother shaking his head but you can <laughs> see how you get a mirror here and I still can go in and add the additional layer very easily I don't have to mask for that add the dots in the center and here's what you can come up with oh that's so gorgeous. I added that same sentiment that I used before I told you I love that sentiment but see how you got that mirror look and it just gives a really dramatic look to it and Gina has a lot of floral stencils that would be great for this and it doesn't have to be a layering stencil set it actually be easier if it wasn't but I love that look that is beautiful you and you know what Jennifer like what a fantastic technique for a gatefold card Yes, yes. Oh, oh that's yep. beautiful. So you could do a gatefold right down the center and it would open mm. up both ways. Mm. Brilliant. That's beautiful. So there you go. Bodacious blooms, baby. <laughs> yeah, very, that's awesome. 
All right, tag your right. Okay, one more. We've got one, one last more. technique, one last one, and that's six. Okay, so I did make a card with my last thing that I made. and it's so um, fast. I want to just show it to you here. Here it is. Oh. I just used a little bit of um, foil to... Um, cover that grateful greeting. It was just something I had laying around. And then to pull in that gold, I used some of our gold metallic pearls in those nice. openings. So I just popped that together. And I know it's crazy, but I used a white border instead of my traditional black border that I use all the time because Ooh. it is black. So white would be, you know, that kind of striking um, little accent panel for behind there. So I did black on this one in your honor. So, oh, I'm so honored. <laughs> and I love that. That is a gorgeous card you made, Jennifer. That's gorgeous. Well, it's coming your way. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I'm not going to argue with that. Okay. So the last technique that I want to show you is the double stencil technique. And I'm going to be using a layered stencil here called Fancy Florals. It's a four-part layering stencil, so this one might take a, a hot minute to do, but I do want to show you this because I think it's really fun to do. Now, I've got a pre-cut die. This is a whole set, so it's got the layering stencils, it's got the full die set, and then it also has a coordinating word set called Fancy Phrases, but these these can be used for anything. But the two pieces that coordinate as far as stenciling and cutting are the, the um, Fancy Florals stencil set and then the coordinating dies. So I cut one of the dies out, as you can see here, it's all cut out. And then I am gonna use another stencil here. And this one I really like, it's called Masks and Fillers. So this one has some, it comes with the two masks here and then it comes with the open sections. Let me pull this out here. Okay. So you can put on your cardstock, you can put this down and you can fill this all in and then you could stamp a silhouette stamp on top of that. So you'd have the oval or the circle. You can also do the reverse of that by tacking this down to your cardstock and just ink blending around the outside. So you've kind of got this fade and then you've got a white circle or a white oval in the center. But then it also has these two extra pieces and these are the fillers. So it's got a stripe pattern and it's got a polka dot pattern. And these are perfect for smaller double stenciling techniques. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of tape on this and I'm gonna just tack it down here so that it doesn't move. And I'm going to start with layer one of this stencil, which this is, is this a beautiful right stencil here. set, so pretty. It's a fun one and it's so easy to use. It doesn't have any flappy parts, which I really like. You know, some <laughs> stencils have flappy parts that are easy to yep. bend and this one just flappy doesn't parts. have any. Yeah, it, and it just it makes it nice, you know? <laughs> so the one thing I wanted to show you, and I'm gonna do this just to kind of show you what it would look like. If you wanted to use a sponge dauber instead of a blending brush, you could just take a little bit of ink Let's get this in the ink stand here. You could take a little bit of ink and then you could just tap that color in there. Okay. And it gives it a different look. It gives it a textured yeah. look. It's so very pretty. I really like that. So I'm going to do that for the first layer. I don't know nice. how much I'm going to love it at the end, but we'll see. I think I will. So... Let me just pull that off and show you what that looks like. So can you see it's very textured. It almost looks like, remember when we used to like sponge paint walls, you know, it's got that yep. little bit of, um, it looks sprayed actually, like you spray painted it a little it bit. It does, it get like a misted kind of look. Absolutely, that's exactly what it looks like. So we'll do that for the first layer and then we're gonna pop the second layer on here, okay. And I'm going to get my tape again. This is pixie tape. And then I'm going to take a, an orange blending brush and I'm gonna use that same color, the sweet mango. So I'm gonna Sweet mango is the best orange color. Oh, it's such a nice one, isn't it? It's and a I'm happy gonna, one. I'm gonna ink that up doing Jennifer's wax on, wax off motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just 
going in both directions to fill it all in. It really catches the edges when you do that, which is nice because the edges become more illuminated. They become darker and then the inside seems like it's a little lighter. You get a lot of natural shading that way. Okay. Vicki's right. It's like an airbrushed look. That's it what is. It is. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Now I'm going to dig around here. I don't know where my other, here it is. Oh gosh, everything is everywhere. I'm going to grab a small It's what people brush. don't see. Everything is everywhere during this. <laughs> it is everywhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these polka dots and I'm going to lay this polka dot stencil over the other stencil. So I haven't removed the stencil yet. Hey, Brianne, I'm using your ink stands. Um, <laughs> and I am going to just be careful to just go into this flower area. So I'm, that's why I'm using a little bit of a smaller brush and I'm using some red hot ink. And I'm just gonna go into this area right here. Oh, that's gonna be pretty. Okay. So now I've created, it looks like a hot mess, but <laughs> we'll see in a minute. I I'm think most techniques look like a hot mess first and then they end up great. You're a hundred percent right. They do. They look like a hot mess and you're like, this is never going to work. And then you do the peel and reveal or whatever you're supposed to do. And you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. it. Okay. And then I'm going to do this And so you could use the one. stripe portion of the stencil too, right? You absolutely you can. Stripes. And I'm going to demo that because I just want to show you how that would look as well. So if you had a little piece of cardstock here, one thing that you can do with the stripe part is... You can take your blending brush and you can scrub in one direction to get some color on. And then you can flip it in the other direction and you can kind of create a little check or a plaid design. And if you do that over the flowers, then your flowers become plaid or checked or striped. Little so either plaid one of these. Flowers. <laughs> That's cute so for cute. spring, right? Yeah. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Pull this apart here. Oh, isn't that fun? So just parts of it are polka dot and other parts have that more fizzy kind of texture. Yes. Oh, that's okay. so fun. So then we're gonna do the leaves and these are all marked in order. So this one would be layer three. We'll just pop that into place. This is pretty easy to line up. It'd be a lot easier to line up if I just stenciled it all in the corner of the Misty and then cut it later. But I really like to have these pieces pre-cut because I, I think it's easier. I, I think so too. I think sometimes you, if you get a little bit off, it's not gonna die cut right. And then that's yep. like a panic time. Okay, so we're gonna start with some jelly bean green ink for this, which is a lighter green. And we're going to just add that into here. Wax on, wax off. Yes. I see this that is in jelly my bean. Now. Jelly bean. <laughs> this is jelly bean. Yeah. Jelly bean. It's a great green. And then we're going to go with the second layer. And we're oh. going to use fresh asparagus on the second layer. So we'll just darken it up a little bit. So this is and brightening up the gloomy day. This, this little flower piece here. <laughs> This is doing it. Oh, gosh. All right. Fresh asparagus is a great one for color, too. I'm using the same yep. blending brush. Doesn't really matter. But I think these colors look really nice together. Fresh asparagus is that same olivey tone. Now, if you're looking for other greens that you can use for this, you can use the spruces. They come in the yep. light, medium, and dark. And then you don't even have to think, is, are these two going to coordinate well? But jelly bean and fresh asparagus are very similar to, um, you know, something that would have been designed to work together as a two-step. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got our double stenciling for our <sighs> flowers. And now I'm going to show you one more little thing. I'm going to show you how important a grounding a bit of grounding can be. So you can use your stencils as a grounding element. So I've got a piece of cardstock here. I'm gonna just tack this down. And then I'm gonna use, where did I put it? This stencil here, this is the cobblestone stencil. And then I'm gonna just lay this right on top and I'm gonna use that black brush 
I'm going to clean it off though here on what's left on my roll of paper towels. <laughs> this is all the paper towels I have left in the world. <laughs> Somebody has to go to the grocery store. <laughs> Absolutely. So I got rid of most of the black and I'm going to leave what's on here. But if you want to do this and you have a nice clean brush, you can use something like soft stone, just a light gray. Okay. And then I'm going to start in the middle and I'm just going to blend out kind of in a circular pattern, but not go to the edge. Okay. Just like that. It's like a little cloud in the middle. Yep. Ugh. So it just kind of creates a little something and I call that a grounding panel. And that just gives you something nice mm -hmm. for that image to lean up against. All right. And your whisper ink would be pretty for that in the background too. Oh, that would be really pretty. Yeah. Any of those two skeleton leaves, any yep. of that and other stencil choices for this kind of grounding are like the harvest flourish is pretty for this. Also the brick wall is great. Mm. Anything like that, that kind of just brings to mind, I don't know, like this just feels very much like outside. You know, like the patio, yep. nothing like that. I'm going to pop this right onto this card base. And then I'm going to, this is a super simple card. I'm going to put this on top with some foam nice. squares. And then we're going to pop a greeting right on top that I have all ready to go from my little bag of greetings that I have on my desk. Now, I know that um, Jennifer likes to um, cut multiple dies and glue them together. And that's a great way to get a lot of height and texture on your card without things kind of getting crushed in mailing. So something like this, you know, because I didn't layer up the dies, it could get like kind of crushed down in certain areas. But... This is what I got going on today. But if I had more time, I would do the Jennifer uh, technique. It's so and, pretty. And then I would just take something like this little strip sentiment, thinking of you, and just pop uh, it right across the center. Perfection. Like that. And I think that that uh, does it. Do you think this should go down a little bit more, like maybe here? I don't know. I liked it up higher. You liked it up know. higher? OK. Yeah. Just make sure it looks in the center. Yeah, I like that. Just okay. kind of grounds it a bit better. Oh, yep. I love it. And so that's the double stencil technique and also the grounding technique. So that's like a little bonus that we threw in that I didn't know I was going to throw in, but I didn't know I was going to make cards either. So there are my <laughs> cards. And Jennifer, let's see your cards again because your cards right. are spectacular. Spectacular. Oh. I'm not as good as, as you, so I can't, what? I oh, can't yeah, do it in advance, crazy. but... Or I have to do it in uh, advance, but yeah, but your go. cards are a bit more complicated than mine. <laughs> well, mine are all the same. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, that's I don't right. know how to do this. Here. I did I something wrong this. here. I can. I can. <laughs> let me zoom out. Here we go. There we go. Let me move my junk out of it's the okay. way. That's the only way I can do it. We're still figuring out these camera things, but you know. There we go. And then there's Gina's. Look at that. Yeah. So that was so, so much fun. So almost seven techniques there. Seven techniques, yeah. And all kinds of variations that you can do of those yeah. techniques. When you start playing and you start getting inky, you're gonna come up with your own things and mixing and matching sure. these together. Yeah. Yeah, I encourage you to go back and, and watch again because as we were doing the techniques, we were throwing more ideas out there. So mm -hmm. you could really walk away with a lot, a lot more than the six or seven techniques, so. Anyway, yeah, that's it. This, that's our tag this, team. This was so much fun. It always is. Thank you. Thank you for doing <laughs> it. So there is in the description below information on how to get 15% off for a few days over at Gina's site on stencils, inking brushes, and um, the daubers. All of that's in the description below. And if you spend $75 on anything at her site, there's a free stamp set. So all of that information, again, is in the description below. You can find that easily. Also, the supplies we used are down there too. Um, I'll add later anything else that might have popped up during it. Um, uh, what, uh, oh, and we're going to do this again next month. But yes. that time will be on Gina's channel, right? Yep. Yep. And we're going to be playing with background stamps. Yes. That's the plan yep. anyway. <laughs> Yep. That's yes. the plan. So people were asking when that's going to be 
Not sure yet. <laughs> yeah. Jennifer and I kind of throw dates at each other and then we have to work through, you know, all my doctor's appointments and all her kid things and all. <laughs> but we figure it out and we will definitely yes. let you guys know. We will definitely let you know. Just watch our social media or her Facebook group. It'll always be mentioned there. So we try to give you a little heads up. Um, one last question, Gina. What is your stamp cleaner called? Because some people uh, were having just, trouble finding it. Uh, it's Gina K Designs Stamp Cleaner. So let me see if I can find it. Yeah. And I'm yeah, not sure these... if it's out of stock. I hope it's not. I know that we ordered oh, it. Yeah. Oh, Tanita. Yeah. Hi, Tanita. <laughs> yeah, Tanita, if, if you search on cleaner, it's the last product that shows up. It is out of stock right now, but it's a little square image. And so it is on the website. So yeah. Anyways, yeah. and the fuse machine is coming back. And when the fuse machine is in stock again, we'll do more foiling ideas, right? Absolutely. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. Yes, me too. Me too. <laughs> well, I think that's it for today. Thank you for joining us, Gina. I love you I love dearly. you too can't wait to hug you in real life soon. I know. Gotta figure that too. out. We've got to figure that we out. Uh, again, everything's in the description. And thank you to Gina for the generous offer. Uh, I, I think we're good for today. And uh, I hope you have a chance to try out some of these ideas. We'll see you again soon. Bye.